This is probably going to be the most momentous week in parliamentary history, if not British constitutional history, at least since the referendum. So the parliament is going to come back after summer recess. It's going to be the first day in which they have the possibility to legislate, to either avoid a no-deal Brexit or to stop their own suspension through prorogation. Now remember, they only have a couple of days between coming back and being able to debate and legislate and then being prorogued or suspended where their whole session ends. Another reason this is a very, very big week is at least three cases in Edinburgh, Belfast and London are coming to be heard. These cases will decide whether or not Parliament is going to be prorogued. I greatly fear uh, the impact on our economy and our public finances of the kind of no-deal Brexit that is realistically being discussed now. I do not believe in promising what we cannot deliver. And I do not believe in pretending that you're going to get some new deal out of Europe before the 31st of October. I don't believe in pretending that there is something called no deal that you're going to be able to drive through Parliament. Parliamentarians do have some duties, and one of them is to prevent people from committing national suicide. A no-deal Brexit does that and cannot address the issues that we have. Government cannot ignore an act of Parliament. For government to ignore an act of Parliament, this would be illegal. This would be a violation of the rule of law in the UK. However, and we might see this, the government might advise uh, the Queen not to give assent to the law. Now, legally, that's possible because the Queen does give royal assent to bills to become law upon the advice of government. But this would turn in a very important question, which is one of confidence. The Queen must have confidence that the Prime Minister has the confidence of the House of Commons to actually make those big decisions in terms of advice. For a general election to be called early, there must be a motion brought by the, the government and two-thirds of the House of Commons must vote in favour of it. If Boris Johnson isn't able to secure two-thirds of the House of Commons, there won't be an early general election. Now, the 31st of October is a key date because that is set in stone. The only way in which that date, and that's the date at which the UK will withdraw from the European Union, currently on no-deal Brexit terms, is if the UK Parliament directs the UK government to go to the European Council on the 17th and 18th of October and to request a further extension. Now, the important qualification about that is there must be unanimity. Every single other member state must vote unanimously in favour of an extension or, well, it's the 31st of October, at which point there will be a no-deal Brexit. Last week I would have said impossible, but we're in impossible and unprecedented times. What I would say is, in order to call a general election, he must have that two-thirds majority to support it. Alternatively, we might see a vote of no confidence. Now, if there's a vote of no confidence, that will begin a two-week period in which either an alternative government will try and be formed or Boris Johnson's government will try and regain confidence of the House. If after that two-week period, there is no alternative government and there is no confidence found for Boris Johnson's government, then there will be a general election triggered automatically. Now, the minimum amount of time for a general election is five weeks. However, Boris Johnson, as the incumbent prime minister, would have the power to decide that date. We could see a general election appearing just before or even just after the point of withdrawal.
Because they broke the constitution. 